Hey, what's going on, Summoners? My name is Crumbs, and I'll be your host for the 12.20 Patch Rundown. Today, we're going to cover the changes and also provide you with updated tier lists for all five roles to give you an idea of what's good and what's not for each role on this patch. Winning starts with drafting the right champions, and this video will give you an immediate advantage over other players in solo queue. Make sure to subscribe because we make meta videos just like this to ensure you're always up to date on what's good and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. First off, let's look at the one thing that everyone can agree Riot does well, the skins. With Halloween just around the corner, the bewitching skin line is back this patch. The champions that will be getting the skins are Anivia, Cassiopeia, LeBlanc, Nico, and Senna. In addition to those bewitching skins, 3 Honors Malzahar has been added to the PBE. This skin is an exclusive reward for players that have been able to hit Honor 5. Finally, an honor to reward players that show dedication to keeping up the good behavior. Now that we've covered the skins, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. We actually have a few to go over this time. The first is a buff to Mortal Reminder. The auto attacks required to trigger the Enhanced Grievous Wounds is going from 3 to 2. I mean, a buff is a buff, but this is a pretty minor one. Mortal Reminder isn't underbuilt because it's hard to proc. If anything, the champions that build it are auto attackers that easily apply the Enhanced Grievous. It's not a great item stat-wise, so most AD carries go with something that gives more DPS or an item like Bloodthirster or Guardian Angel for more safety. Overall, not much should change and this item should still only be bought at any time you would have before. The other item being buffed this patch is Sterax Gauge. The bonus AD is being raised from 45-50% to 50 of your champion's base AD. The shield is going from 75-80% to 80 bonus HP, and the decay timer on that shield is being raised from 3.75 seconds to 4.5. This is a huge buff to the item. Sterax has kind of fallen off this season, with only super beefy juggernauts really abusing the item consistently. Now, they'll be even better with it, but the main point of the buff is to hopefully make it more commonly built on bruisers that need it to help them survive teamfights. Frozen Heart is finally getting its overdue nerf. This item shows up in tons of builds from top to jungle and even some supports. The nerfs will be raising the cost from 2500 to 2700 and lowering the rock solid base reduction from 7 to 5. To compensate a bit, they'll be giving it an extra 10 armor. Honestly, I still think they could have gone a bit higher on the price. It's nice it'll take longer to finish, but I don't see it losing out to other armor options on the champions that like to pick it up. Lethal Tempo is another thing that has needed to be nerfed for quite a while, and again, I feel like Riot's not quite on the money with this one. They're just lowering the bonus attack range you get on ranged champions from 75 down to 50, so it matches what melee champions get. I think the range was fine. What they should be targeting with their nerf is the early game damage it gives. It should be a very late game centric rune, so I'd even be happy if they nerfed it early and buffed it later on. The last system change we're seeing is an adjustment to Demonic Embrace. They'll be lowering the health from 450 to 350, increasing the AP from 60 to 75, and decreasing the burn damage for ranged champions from 1% down to 0.8% of your target's max HP. I think this is a pretty good shift, since the champions that built Demonic Embrace get way too much value out of the beefiness and free damage you get from it. Alright, and with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at our updated tier list. Actually, before that, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players who have spent years climbing the ladder and they're ready to share everything they've learned with you. So, if cramming in years of top tier gameplay into short hour long sessions to instantly get better at the game sounds good to you, you really should go pay them a visit. And they're available 24 7, so feel free to head on over anytime. Okay, now let's get to that tier list. As always, we'll start off with our top laners. The first swap we'll be making here is moving Shen down to the S tier. Really, this is just a result of the OP tier being so heavily overcrowded right now. There are a lot of broken champions for climbing at the moment, so we need to make sure that there's just a little bit more room up there. That said, Shen is still ridiculously strong for such an easy champion to play. His ult allows you to both split push and be ready to teamfight with the press of a button, meaning you can always provide a ton of macro strength at later stages of the game. 
they would need to truly gut this champion to make him not a super strong pick right now. Ilawi has been forced down as a result of so many champions being in the OP and S tiers. She still fills a strong niche as a counter pick to tanks and can take over any game if she gets a big lead. But in common matchups, she's just way too inconsistent to make it any higher than the A tier right now. We'll be dropping Set down to the A tier as well. His nerfs this patch are heavily aimed at his ability to take a beating and just sustain the rip by regening with his passive. So he's by no means totally dead as a pick. In fact, in good matchups, you could argue he's even better, since they're shifting some of that defensive power into his offense by increasing his right punch's bonus AD ratio. But again, lack of consistency is what forces him down to the A tier. The Wukong buff this patch is a pretty big one, adding a full 55% AD ratio to each cast of his ult, but it's still kind of hard to decide where he goes on the list. Buffing a champion's ultimate doesn't mean much if their issue is the laning phase. We'll have to wait and see once this one goes live to have a more definite answer on where he belongs on this list. Sadly, Maokai is being nerfed yet again, so we're demoting him to the B tier. Personally, I think this is a bit silly. We've had champions that are way more oppressive than Maokai completely ignored for months at a time, but the second he's strong, he's hit with back-to-back -back nerfs in an attempt to make him borderline unviable. I mean, look at Wukong. He was god tier in all three topside roles for like half of this year, and right now, he's not even doing that poorly. He's just average, yet they're handing him out buffs that about a hundred other champions could use a lot more. There's no arguing the fact that Aatrox is objectively a super powerful champion. That is to say, when played perfectly, he's one of the best in the game. Just look at Worlds. He had a 96% presence in play-in and has had 100% presence once the real deal started. But solo queue is a different story. In the middle elos we aim this tier list at, he's just barely above average. Even though his nerf on this patch is small, we think it's enough to at least move him down to the B tier. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Last patch, Ramus unexpectedly fell off really hard. We thought maybe it was just a fluke, so we didn't bother adjusting him in our mid-patch update. It turns out, it actually wasn't all that random. Riot made an unlisted adjustment to how his W is calculated, and it hit him pretty hard. This patch, they're coming back with a pretty good list of buffs that we think should allow him to keep his spot in the OP tier. That said, we're not 100% sure on that yet, so come back next week for the mid-patch update to see if we're overestimating here. Amumu gets moved up to the OP tier for this patch. He's been doing really well lately, and with Maokai taking yet another big nerf this patch, we'll happily move him into his spot up there. He's got a bit of a slow start, but he's by no means a pushover early. He has a quick, healthy clear, and is honestly a pretty strong duelist, so you won't get bullied when you're trying to scale. Shivana's also back in the OP tier. Her changes on 1219 were aimed at making the tank build weaker while opening up more damage heavy ones. The first part of that goal flopped. The tank build is doing pretty much exactly as well and is still so easy a caveman could do it. That said, the part about more damage heavy builds being stronger was a success. In fact, her best build at the moment is a more AD bruiserish one, going for items like Trinity Force, Sterax, which is buffed on this patch, and Titanic Hydra. Udir also moves up to the OP tier. His 1218 changes heavily mirror the ones we just talked about for Shivana. Again, the goal was to shift him from the AP Bruiser tank build to a more AD heavy one. Also again, his AP build is still a strong, easy to play option that any autofill player can make look good, but if you really know what you're doing, his AD build carries insanely hard. We'll be moving Evelyn up to the S tier. I'd like to say Eve really needed the buffs she's getting this patch, but she doesn't anymore. She was doing pretty awful most of the season, but lately she's been doing super well for an assassin. Adding 5 damage to her Q against marked targets may not seem like much, but that really adds up fast and buffing a champion's clear speed is usually one of the best buffs a jungler can get. An S tier placement may end being a bit of an overestimation, but it's what we're gonna go with for now. We don't think the Maokai nerfs will hurt him quite as bad as in the top lane, but it's still definitely enough to knock him down to at least the A tier. Again, this is another one that's a bit more of a guess and he could end up going lower, so check back next week to see once we have more data. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Ziggs has been doing pretty decently lately, yet for some reason he's getting a random buff this patch, so we're moving him up to the S tier. 
it's just 10 damage to his Q, but with how much you spam it, that adds up to a lot of extra wave clear and poke in lane. Add on running Scorch over Gathering Storm, and he quickly becomes a pretty mean lane bully. Set's nerf this patch should make him way less reliable as a mid laner, especially against mages that aim to poke you down hard early, so we're moving him down to the A tier. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. Down here, we'll be moving Ziggs all the way up to the OP tier. Everything we said about mid Ziggs applies here, except we think he's just way more dominant against this lane's champion pool. He's the go-to pick if you just want to auto-win the lane for this role. Brand, on the other hand, isn't doing quite as well, so we're moving him down to the A tier. He's still a decent option with good poke and wave clear, but all of the other mages in the S and OP tiers have just as much poke and wave clear, plus they scale insanely hard for later team fights. Blitzcrank is getting a pretty big list of changes this patch, aimed at making him weaker as a support and stronger in the jungle. We have no idea how he'll shape up in the jungle, so we aren't even touching that until we have more data. But as a support, he should honestly still be pretty strong. So for now, we'll just move him down one notch to the S tier. That said, we can't be too sure. Ticking away so much damage from his Q and E will hurt his ability to burst targets down that you hook. But his damage is so over the top right now, it may barely be noticeable. We'll just have to double check this one in next week's mid patch update. And that concludes our 12.20 patch rundown. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comment section. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description link below. Oh, and one last thing. Good luck in your games, and may the LP God smile down upon you.